Thank you so much. <laughs> Here you go. Um, excellent. So, um, over to Lindell Mollet, who I would like to introduce first a little bit. Um, Lindell is a registered nurse and a registered midwife, and she has a Bachelor in Health Sciences and a Master in Midwifery. She has also a Diploma in Reflexology, and she's currently doing a PhD. Um, Linda has worked in midwifery for over 30 years um, and as a clinical consultant for the past 14 years. She has a strong interest in complementary alternative medicine and that, that is what she's talking about today. So over to Linda. Thank you and uh, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Is that loud enough? Very good. Excellent. Yes, yes, okay. super. Okay, thank you for the opportunity to present and this is the first time I'm presenting at the Virtual International Midwives Day Conference. Um, I've been looking forward to it all day and I've actually been teaching so I can sit back now and relax and uh, present instead. <laughs> so my presentation today is titled Midwives and Complementary Alternative Medicine or CAM. Does Midwives' personal use impact on their clinical practice. And I'm just going to get that. So, just to provide you an overview of the presentation for today, I'm going to briefly discuss um, CAM and self help strategies women use, especially for post date pregnancy. I'll talk briefly about um, induction of labour and what research is already out there around CAM and pregnant women, but also what also midwives recommend. And then I'd like to go into some detail about a national midwife survey that we've just completed um, of, in Australia and look at some of the findings and discussion the conclusion and then finish off with question time. However, there will be an opportunity if we want halfway through if you want any ask any questions before I get into our survey. So just to define complementary alternative medicines, or some people say um, the therapies, is a group, and it's interesting to see the definition because more te um, techniques are becoming mainstream. However, current definition is a group of diverse medical and healthcare systems, practices, and pra pr products that are not generally considered part of conventional or Western medicine. And these can be categorised into five main areas. So looking at alternative uh, medical systems, such as homeopathy, um, naturopath medicine, traditional Chinese medicine or TCM, which includes acupuncture and Ayurvedic. Uh, the second one is mind-body interventions, such as prayer, meditation, spiritual healing, and any therapy that reacts creates or uses a creative outlets such as art, music and dance. When looking at the biological based theories, there's herbs, food, vitamins and minerals, uh, essential oils and dietary supplements. Manipulative and body based myths such as chiropractic or osteopath manipulation, reflexology and massage. And the last one on energy therapies like Shigong, Reiki or therapeutic touch. So when I was trying to find a, a definition for self-help strategies, it was a little bit harder to find. So I've sort of developed my own with help from um, a previous publication by Evans in 2009. So it's natural options administered or ingested by a pregnant woman and the woman feels in control and actively participating in her care. However, this may take time and commitment from the woman as some of these options may take several days uh, to produce a result. However, that could be said also for some of the medical procedures that women undertake as well. So if you want to have a look at induction of labour, it can be defined as stimulation of the uterus with the aim of starting labour to ensure delivery of the fetus at appropriate time when the baby is thought to be safer outside the uterus than in it. And the most common reason for an induction of labour is women who are post-dates 
or post-term or prolonged pregnancy. And quite often these terms are used interchangeable. However, when you look at the definition, they are quite different. So post dates for my study and um, also by a number of other authors is a pregnancy that continues past the expected date of birthing or confinement, although I don't like to use the word confinement because if you look in the dictionary, it actually means being incarcerated or in jail. So I prefer to use birthing. Whereas post-term or prolonged pregnancy is a gestation length of 294 days or 14 days over the due date, which would occur in 5% of all births if women were allowed to go over 14 days, which in these days, quite often, um, 10 days is now being used um, as the definition for post-term and prolonged pregnancy in the drive-through delivery um, countries where women want to give birth sooner rather than later. So when we look at induction of labour methods such as the medical and surgical procedures, but when we look at the non-medical or surgical such as CAM or self-help techniques, they're in a range. So for example, the CAM techniques used by women vary with limited research to support them. Specific herbs such as evening primrose oil, raspberry leaf and blue cohosh as well as date fruit have been examined on their effect on labour induction and contractions. Other care modalities include um, homeopathic remedies, reflexology, shiatsu and acupressure and acupuncture. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go into the details about these studies. However, the two randomised controlled trials on the use of date fruit um, did show an increase on centre labour compared to standard care. Also, reflexology and acupuncture studies have shown to increase contractions and diets above the dilatation. The four acupressure shiatsu studies that have been recently published in the last 10 years vary in outcomes as they have used different aims and objectives. Some have used cervical uh, bishop school and some have used onset of labour. With the self-help options, it's interesting that the systematic reviews of sexual intercourse, ingestion of spicy foods or castor oil found little evidence to support their use. How a nipple or breast stimulation does appear beneficial in reducing the number of women not in labour after 72 hours. So if we have a look at some of the studies that have been published over the, I've only looked at probably a, a short period of time, um, there is probably more, but trying to keep it more relevant in more modern times, is some of these studies are from around the world, as you can see. Um, some of them are actual national studies, but some are specific regions. And so you can see what a fairly wide range um, between, for example, um, UK, which was a national study, 26.7% uh, of women used complementary therapies in pregnancy, whereas when you look at a specific region such as the Birmingham study, it was up to 57%. Um, Australia, even though it's an old study, back in 2008, was 73%. Um, Italy, Germany, uh, quite, they've got a variety of percentages. And then there were some studies that looked specifically at herbal um, therapies used during pregnancy as there's concerns raised about safe issues and the level of dosage in pregnancy. And you can see that they're actually a lot less in the percentage that more around that 30 to 40 percent um, use of herbal supplements in pregnancy. So when the studies have actually asked um, who do women identify health professionals, they said that midwives, nurses, general practitioners and obstetricians are their main source of information about CAM and self-help self strategies during pregnancy and for labour induction. And then they also included friends, websites um, and Facebook.
Then we have a look at midwife professional use or referral of complementary therapies. Uh, again, there's a wide variety from all different countries. Most studies concentrated on the professional use of CAM, recommending CAM options and referral patterns to CAM practitioners. You can see that the studies were conducted in various countries, with all being conducted by questionnaires, except for one, Adams, which was interviews with um, 13 qualitative studies, which actually, believe it or not, I was part of that study, and I completely forgot that I was part of that study. Um, but the response rate varied from 23 to 81%, and the numbers, as you can see, involved in the studies varied from 13 up to 343. It was interesting when I reviewed their articles that most of the studies, when they used the word midwife uses, used or uses CAM, when you read the articles there, uh, authors are actually referring to their professional use of CAM, not their personal use. So the, varies, the studies varied with um, midwives recommending CAM. You've got 58.9% in Turkey, 72% in New Zealand and Canada, 80 to 85% in Australia, and 90 to 93% in the USA. Again, some of these studies were not national studies, but actually region or state. So the research suggests that midwives are highly likely to offer CAM options to women due to midwives holding the view of CAM as an alternative aid to reducing medical intervention, to empower women in their care, and as a means to increase their autonomy. So part of my, I undertook a feasibility randomised controlled trial on the use of acupressure to stimulate labour for primitive gravitas experiencing a post-date pregnancy, which has been published in 2016. And part of that, we undertook a focus group with doctors and midwives to explore their views and attitudes to complementary therapies. And also we implementing complementary therapies and acupressure in clinical practice. Upon reviewing the unpublished qualitative data on midwives' views of CAM, it seemed that midwives who personally used CAM were more likely to discuss and recommend CAM to pregnant women. Most of my colleagues, when I mentioned this, went, duh, of course. That would be because that makes sense. And I said, but it's interesting that this area has not been researched or published. None of the studies have asked the question, does midwives per own personal use of CAM or, how, or their personal use influence what they offer to women or discuss or recommend? So there's that significant gap in the literature regarding the midwife's personal use and the relationship with offering and discussing self-help and CAM options, specifically to women experiencing a post-date pregnancy. So we undertook a national survey of Australian midwives. To do this, the best way to do we felt to capture the majority of midwives was to access the Australian College of Midwives Association, which has 4,677 uh, members in all states and territories of Australia. They also had the option where all the midwives who are registered in as a member receive a weekly college e-bulletin. So when we calculated the sample size to have sufficient statistical power, it was 375 participants with a 5% margin of error and a 95% confidence interval. So we were hopeful that we would get more than 375 out of a possible 4,677. So we tried it. But following ethical approval, the research invitation was distributed in two ways because when we actually looked at recent online survey studies inviting midwives to participate in research, they only had a response rate of anything from about 7 to 19 per cent. So what we did was at a uh, national midwifery conference we distributed surveys to 160 eligible midwives or participants and the second one where we actually included our research invitation 
uh, was electronically sent by the College eBulletin with a short information section and a link to a SurveyMonkey questionnaire. And that was emailed twice. Um, and then we only had about 200 respond. So we then went with a dedicated eBulletin um, four weeks apart to try and increase the response rate. So part of that was they had an information sheet. We explained that the participation was voluntary but there was no formal consent required as it was implied by completing the survey. As the researchers did not collect information on email or internet um, protocol addresses, it was possible the participants may have completed the survey more than once. However, we thought it unlikely as midwives are usually very busy people. The presentation today, I'd like to concentrate on the first three sections of the survey. So looking at the demographics, looking at their clinical practice and looking at their personal use, not only for their health and wellbeing but also the midwives' own pregnancies as well. The other two components, um, I'm still working on the data. Okay, hopefully some of these have moved a little bit slightly. So we had 579 respondents, which was about 12.2%, which well and truly was above the 375 that we needed for, um, to make it worthwhile. Of those, the majority of course were registered midwives. However, we did have eight student midwives who also completed the survey. As you can see, the demographic data was represented with midwives for, um, around Australia, from all the states and territories. We also checked the uh, percentage against the ACM membership, and that was representative, and also um, against the registration, Australia Registration Board's um, membership as well. We also looked at the age, and again, that bell curve was representative of the membership, but also the Australian um, midwifery and uh, board. And I don't know if you can see that clearly. However, the majority of the uh, midwives indicate they worked in all areas of maternity care, which is about 90, uh, 59%. The other areas were antenatal, interpartum, postnatal, there was also community, um, group, private practice, um, midwifery group practice or caseload, um, education um, and management and other. As there was only eight student midwives in the survey, we did not do a separate analysis and the remainder of this presentation, rather than saying registered midwife, student midwife, I'll refer to the total respondents as midwives. So, what did we find? Surprising or not surprising? That the majority of respondents, 91%, 1.2, discuss self-help and care options to pregnant women experiencing a post-date pregnancy. And 88.6% recommend the self-help care options to pregnant women experiencing a post-date pregnancy. When we actually looked at the statistical significance, it was highly significant that midwives were more likely to discuss the options when they felt confident in having the knowledge to discuss or recommend these strategies, which is worthwhile. However, of concern, 26% of respondents who did discuss and or recommend CAM did not feel confident in their knowledge of complementary therapies. So, oh, missing the title. So when we had a look at the top five, um, we did more than five. Other studies in the previous slide only allowed respondents to select four or up to ten CAM options. In our study, we actually gave respondents 23 CAM options to choose from, 
but I'm only going to con show you the top five in this day, uh, for this presentation. So as you can see, the top five complementary therapies recommended by midwives for women who are experiencing a post-date pregnancy was acupuncture, followed by acupressure at 58%, raspberry leaf, evening pr oh, sorry, that's a typo. It should actually be raspberry leaf rather than evening primrose, my mistake, at 52%. Massage at th nearly 39%, and then hypnosis, calm birthing, or hypnotherapy at 35.7%. When we actually looked at the self-help options, as you can see, that uh, sexual intercourse was rated high as a recommended um, self-help strategy at 83%. Exercise, such as walking and swimming, at 82%. Nipple stimulation at nearly 80%. And then followed, by, to a lesser degree, by eating spicy food at 16.8%. And even castor oil at 5.8%. As mentioned earlier, the Cochrane Reviews had not found any particular benefit from eating spicy food or castor oil, but midwives are still recommending their use of castor oil, although on a much a smaller percentage. This is still common practice. Uh, I haven't gone into the data to actually check to see whether there was any particular um, specifics around the midwives who did recommend um, castor oil. Because I know when I first did my training many, many years ago, it was a suggested recommendation. So let me actually have a look at midwives' personal use of TAM when they're not pregnant. It was interesting that 80% of participants had used TAM strategies um, in the past for their own personal use, with many of the participants using multiple modalities. However, the top five here are in reverse order. So we've got massage at 80%, acupuncture, followed by aromatherapy, chiro at nearly 60%, and then acupressure at 55.7%. When we actually asked them what they, how they experienced it, 91% of them found that their personal experience was very positive or positive. When we asked them for their pregnancy use themselves, the highest actually came up with the raspberry leaf to your tablet at 55.8%, then followed by massage, aromatherapy, acupuncture at 38.6% and acupressure at 36.3%. So this represented um, for the pregnancy, nearly half of the, of the participants, so 46.8% of the participants had used TAM strategies in their own pregnancies. About 23% didn't use it and a lot of them actually said they were more mature of age and they weren't aware and if they had known about it, they probably would have used it in some of the comments. Um, and about 30% um, for this question um, answered not applicable. So it's not surprising that the majority um, of midwives are women and women are high users of CAM. So it does reflect um, what a lot of the research does say. So we actually did some logistical regression to actually look at what were the characteristics of a midwife who does recommend or discuss self-help and complementary therapies for post-date pregnancy. And what we were able to find that respondents were more likely to discuss the options for post-date pregnancy if they were personally used, came, were younger or had worked less years as a midwife. Also, they were more likely to discuss it if they provided CAM to women in the perinatal period. Respondents were more likely to recommend the strategies for post dates if they personally used it, CAM in the past, were younger, worked less years as a midwife, but also if they'd used it in their own pregnancy and were younger. 
that actually really surprised me. I thought actually I didn't know what to think um, because, as I said, there's not a lot of research out there. So. This is the first national survey of Australian midwives on self-help and care strategies for women experiencing a post-date pregnancy. We also looked at the midwife's personal use and its impact on clinical practice, and we also looked at discussing and recommending of the self-help and care strategies. For us, we were able to determine that the five top recommended strategies by midwives was different to other studies. There was a study, um, two studies that were done, uh, before, conducted in the USA, although they women were not post-date, their average gestation was about 39 to 40 weeks. They found that American women used less strategies like acupuncture, which was only about 2%, or herbal uh, preparations with 1% with a high preference for self-help options like walking at 43%, um, intercourse at 23%, spicy food 11%, to, for self-induced labour. There was one qualitative study that's been um, done in Australia by um, Gatwood in 2010, and our uh, findings are very similar to um, Hillary's in the respect that the Australian midwives in her study had a high use of self-help, such as nipple stimulation, but also acupuncture, raspberry leaf, to stimulate a post-date pregnancy. As this is the first study examining uh, midwives' use of CAM in their own personal lives and in their pregnancies, we are unable to compare our findings to other studies. However, what we were able to find is that respondents' age, years as a midwife and personal use had a significant impact on their clinical practice by discussing and recommending um, self-help and complementary therapies to women with a post-date pregnancy. We were also able to determine that respondents' age and personal use during their own pregnancy had a significant impact on their recommending the strategies to women. So in conclusion, um, we were able to undertake a national survey of Australian midwives with representation from every state and territory in Australia. We were able to, sh the evidence shows that women and pregnant women are high users of complementary therapies and alternative medicines. And as the majority of midwives are women, it is expected that many midwives would personally use CAM in their own health and well-being and in their own pregnancies. This increased use of CAM by women, as I've said generally, and pregnant women specifically, is linked to the per pursuit of more choice, empowerment and great autonomy in health care decision midwifery, which also fits in with the midwifery philosophy. We recognise the potential limitation of this study was that the sample was self-selected and it was possibly only midwives who were interested in CAM would respond to the survey. However, it was reassuring that we actually had about 48 participants, about 8%, who actually completed the survey, who never discussed CAM with women, did not have knowledge or education on CAM and did not use CAM for personal use. So they also participated in the study. So overall, the majority of respondents did discuss or recommend CAM to women experiencing a post-date, and personal use did influence their decisions and recommendations of strategies to women. However, midwives need to have the confidence and the knowledge to discuss these strategies in an evidence-based approach. I believe that nursing and midwifery education programs and another, a number of other authors, authors um, such as Hall and Kieran, believe that CAM options need to be included in nursing and midwifery programs 
including their existing safety and efficiency data. We are hopeful that our state's findings, which is in our next section of the survey, um, will be published in the future, and that will concentrate on looking at midwives' education and training in Cairns. The findings included in this presentation has been submitted for publication, and we are currently awaiting feedback and hopefully will be published this year. Um, Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Linda. Um, everybody, you can um, ask or type your questions into the chat box, but you could also um, ask your question. So you just raise your hand and we give you um, the microphone. Thanks, Linda. That was really excellent. Thank you. Um, we had um, a first um, question. On, on the legal status of complementary alternative um, medicine. Um, I think Lindsay asked that. Um, in she, or she, re she says that in the UK, only those who are formally qualified can use the techniques with mothers and babies. Whereas Mary then responded in Australia, a midwife can only use acupuncture if um, she's authorized by the Chinese medicine board. Did you come across these things, um, that there's um, issues with legal status also? Um, it's interesting. Up till we went, in Australia, up till we went to a um, national registration, each state and territory in Australia uh, registration board all had a policy or a position statement on the use of complementary therapies by midwives in their clinical practice. Um, and I've kept a copy of each of them and they are still available on the internet. And all of them say, yes, that the midwife has to have the knowledge and the skills and an accredited course. They also have to, within their scope of practice, have a policy or a procedure at their hospital where they're working to cover them. However, since 2000 and since the national, since we've gone to a national registration, um, we have been asking for a position statement from the registration board, but as yet we still not have, have anything. What they do is they define scope of practice is that it's the responsibility of each organisation to have a policy or a procedure um, that includes that. So if a hospital or a policy doesn't have, um, sorry, if a hospital doesn't have a policy or procedure that identifies that midwives within their scope of practice, then yes, the midwives are working outside um, what's accepted. And the hospital that I've worked in for many years, um, up till last year, um, I was instrumental in implementing um, guidelines and clinical practice procedures, specifically on reflexology, aromatherapy and acupressure. So the midwives who had completed um, endorsed qualified um, training were able to practice it into their clinical practice. Mm -hmm. But I believe each uh, each country has a different, uh, for like uh, acupuncture, um, a lot of other countries overseas do um, permit midwives to undertake acupuncture within their scope of practice um, after they've completed a recognised course such as the one provided by Deborah Betts from New Zealand. Yeah, maybe um, if anybody ha else has experience from their country, please uh, let us know. It would be interesting. Um, I realized that you, uh, from your findings that it's um, mainly young midwives or midwives that have not been long in the profession that recommend or that also discuss this option. How do you explain that? What is your what is your idea about that? Yes, I actually that's what I thought was really interesting because when I've conducted workshops, quite often it's the more mature midwives that are actually um, coming along. Um, at this stage, there's very little research looking in Australia, looking at all the universities to actually see if they're covering complementary therapies in their undergraduate. Um, course um, in the Bachelor of Midwifery. 
Um, I actually do teach into a couple of different um, universities that included in the program. So that way it's actually increasing the profile um, and looking at safety and research um, at an undergraduate level so that the younger midwives um, have the knowledge and the skill. That's the only thing that I can think of because that actually did surprise me. I would, I thought it would be the other way. Mm. Yeah, I think like in Germany, it's also um, part of um, the undergraduate um, curriculum. I mean, mid midwifery students would would definitely learn something. But um, I also feel that the ones who are longer in the in the profession um, have more experience and therefore might be able to use it more or to offer it also more. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> interesting. Yeah, you will. I, yeah, I even looked at. Um, a variety of different options. I looked at um, where they were from, what they, whether they had a degree or not, um, whether they, so all the demographics I compared and they were the only statistically significant ones that came up. Yeah, Alicia just says um, that she is 26 and she has worked um, as a midwife for two and a half years and actually she was um, brought up using Chinese medicine regularly or other um, complementary therapies and she she asked the question maybe there's just um, this kind of therapies are just becoming more socially accepted and that's maybe also because um, in this um, group it's uh, more it's increased yeah what do you think about that yeah yeah when I actually just some of the comments of the older midwives when I asked them about did they use complementary therapies in their previous in their own pregnancies a number of the midwives did there was a section they could actually write a comment in it and that was what I was saying it was interesting that the older midwives said that they weren't aware of the complementary therapies um, when they were pregnant um, many years ago um, mm -hmm. and if they had known it they actually would have used them so definitely um, they are growing more and more and when you look at the literature and the studies it's probably been the last 15 years that um, there seems to be that increase. Mm -hmm. And um, I would also have a question is um, are these complementary alternative medicines included in any clinical guidelines? Only if you personally write them. <laughs> so, <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. yeah okay. So um, when I've looked at it, there is a number of looked around the world and what's been published because a lot of them are published there in in hospital policies and procedures. Um, there, there was I found a, a labour guideline uh, from America that it include aqua pressure. Um, so they're starting to get more and more there because they realise that women are actually using them and so one, the midwives need to know about them but two, they need to acknowledge that the women are going to use a variety of techniques when they're in labour. More women are bringing in aromatherapy which, you know, which is one of the examples that um, they have to be careful because, for example, with aromatherapy there's some oils that are not inducive for labour um, and if someone has just bought some oils over the counter or used fragrant oils it can be quite toxic and uncomfortable not only for the woman but the people who are also in the room including partners, support people and the midwives. Um, so for example at our hospital we had a midwife, a French midwife who was an aromatherapist and so she provided, we did education, we had an education um, workbook, midwives were accredited to provide uh, aromatherapy in labour and we actually got the pharmacy company in a hospital to contact um, one of the companies and we got their data safety sheet and from there we were then able, we provided the oils so that we knew that they were um, the best quality um, and safely used and stored and they were appropriate for labour. But a lot of people just bring in oils, um, which, as I said, may not be best quality or appropriate in labour. Okay. Any more questions by anybody? Please type them in or, or raise your hand to ask questions. Um, 
in, I can just tell you from Germany, there's um, also midwives um, are allowed to do acupuncture, for example, um, if they um, uh, participated in an accredited course. But on um, the other hand, they have to pay, like women have to pay that themselves, especially acupuncture. So it's not um, part of, of regular care and it's not covered by the health insurance companies. What, what about this in Australia? Is that is it something that is actually covered by your insurance that um, um, that you are able to provide that? It's interesting in Australia. Only um, acupuncturists who have completed a recognised acupuncture course that um, through the colleges are allowed to um, become professionals and are in private practice. Um, and people, um, women who want to access them, it's only covered through their private health insurance, um, so that it is out of pocket. Um, Deborah Betts, who teaches the midwife acupuncture course in a variety of different countries, came over two years ago to Australia, and in other countries such as New Zealand, America, uh, New Zealand, um, Canada, and the UK, um, the midwives they were able to use it in their clinical practice. However, in Australia, um, it was called acuneedling because it was a it was recognised by our college. Where it was over four weekends, six months with a variety of assignments. It worked out at 140 hours for the midwives to be trained specifically for pregnant, labouring, and postnatal women. Um, however, um, the hospitals that they worked at. Uh, they didn't approve the midwives to actually use it in clinical practice. However, I believe there is one hospital now who has a clinical guideline and the midwives are now able to provide that care at that hospital free mm -hmm. of charge within their, um, as their clinical practice. But whereas GPs can actually, or general practitioners, local doctors, can spend a weekend, two days, and then actually undertake and provide acupuncture and charge people. Okay, so Sarah is just uh, recommending um, the website of Deborah um, with free downloadable acupressure booklets for labor and she's uh, posting up uh, um, uh, a link so uh, everybody feel free to have a look there. Yes, I actually was taught by Deborah and um, I continue to teach acupressure and her, it's a 23 page um, PDF booklet for women and their partners and she very much um, supports and encourages the partners to actually use the acupressure um, during labour. It's a really good resource. Please, if, everybody, if, if, if anybody else has some good resources, just post them. It might be interesting. Um, what I also was wondering, um, you talked about the demographics of, of your study participants and I was wondering um, also of the origin of these midwives. Do, for example, midwives, maybe you are practicing midwives in Australia with Chinese origin, would they more likely yeah. to recommend that? Is that something you could find too in your, in your um, analysis? It was actually about 97% Caucasian, Australian, um, Caucasian white um, background. Mm. The, the other 3% was a mix of, from a variety of other countries and other ethnic origins. Mm -hmm. So no, Chinese didn't come up strongly there at all. Mm, okay. Yeah. Or European or, so yeah. Okay, so you could not um, disaggregate the data there. Okay, um, I think um, let us just wrap up. Um, first of all, again, thank you, Lindo. That was excellent, and I think um, I'm looking forward to um, the the findings of of the other parts. And I'm sure I will I will hear from it because actually. Linda and I, we are fellow PhD students at the University of Technology in Sydney, so um, at some point we might, might actually meet in reality. <laughs> and um, so just to wrap up also her session, um, we learned that midwives, especially if they have 
own experience with con um, complementary or um, complementary alternative medicine um, are all are more likely to discuss or actually provide these kind of therapies. So that was um, just a gap in literature you found and you addressed for the first time in this in this national survey. And uh, what we also outlined is that um, the, um, the midwives that would recommend it or discuss this um, kind of therapies are more likely to be younger or um, uh, fewer years in the profession. Um, but also if they have positive experience, um, if they made positive experience with um, CAM before um, in, their, in their own lives, in their own preg pregnancies, then they are more likely to recommend it. So thank you so much. I think um, all of this is recorded and people will have the chance to listen to it um, again. Lindo, I give you um, last word. <laughs> Thank you. No, hopefully next year I'll come back and present the rest of the data and the rest of the survey. Excellent. Um, we are looking forward to that. So, um, thanks to all listening and uh, we will turn off um, the recording. <laughs>